guys. Are you a football coach? I am a football coach. Oh, I'm a football coach for oh, high school. Josh, you down. Say what? Josh, sign up, Josh. Say what? You sign up. Go ahead, believe sign up. Oh, what grade are you in? Seven. I'm okay. in six. I want to know what grade you're in. I'm in eight. I'm in eight. What kind of grade you're in? I'm in eight. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You can hear me. I'm in eight. My boy. He's 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 my boy. I play baseball. So, are you, are you a student athlete? What's that mean? I don't know. Student athlete. I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to talk about some stuff like that. Listen. Not do you just play sports, but are you a student athlete? Oh, uh, yeah. I get good. Who, who knows what a student athlete is? We'll start there, first of all. Not necessarily the good grades. That's not what I'm saying. What's a student athlete? Yes, sir. Somebody that has passion. Has passion. Okay. That could be one of, one of the choices. Okay. That's one character of it. What else? That's brave. Okay. What else is a? You missing the first word? Student. What's the first word? Student. Smart. Right. right. Yes, sir. Responsible. Responsible. Those are characters by the good grades, right? But what does your report card say? Does this say good? Does it say nice? Does it say he's fun? Or does it say A, B, C, D, F? Doesn't it say stuff like that? Yes. No. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mine don't. I be getting all B's. Mine don't. Well, I mean, but what does it say? What's the grading scale? What is it? Is it good? Yeah. He's all right. Does it say that on there? Or what does it say? A, B. Because you get your average, correct? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Now, the reason I said student athlete is because I didn't say athlete student. Because if you were an athlete, how many people play sports in here? It's a whole lot of people that play sports. It's a whole lot of people play sports everywhere. But how many people plan on playing college ball? So you got to be a student athlete. 2.5 is the bare minimum that you need to get into most average colleges. 2.5 is a C average. D's and F's, that ain't going to get it. Okay? So before I get into that, that's a whole other presentation I want to talk about at another time. I want to get to know who I'm talking to in here. Stand up, say your name, and what grade are you in? Really quick so I know who I'm talking to. I'm in seventh grade. Okay, nice. I'm at Wilson, I'm in eighth grade. Nice. You guys been working with it in here, I can tell. My name is Ken Walker, and I'm in eighth grade. Okay. My name is Eric Finger, and I'm in the seventh grade. Okay. My name is Sanoi Finger, and I'm in eighth grade. Okay. My name is Yaku Williams, and I'm in eighth grade. One more time. My name is Yaku Williams, and I'm in eighth grade. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Who else? My name is Shabon. My name is Shabon. My name is Sean Pro. Okay. All right, give yourselves a hand. Everybody in school? Everybody in school? All right, all right. All right. Now let me ask you a question. I, what do you think, what do you think the most important thing is right now that you should be doing if you're in the seventh grade? Hold on, we you answer? Seventh grade, eighth grade, or sixth grade. What should you be doing right now? What's the most important thing you should be doing? Yes, sir. Focus on your grades. Focus on your grades. Okay. Um, striving to graduate middle school. Striving to graduate middle school. Got you. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And okay. what you gonna do? What you planning that stuff now, right? What your this is an on point group right here. So this group right here, what 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 is this group right here? This is the what? What, what do you call yourself? 21st century. 21st century. Ooh, I like that. And what? The elites. Ooh, okay. So y'all brought me in with the, okay, okay. I like that. See, one of the things you're going to learn really quickly about the way I look at things is I look at things from a big picture. Because if you, if you notice, if you notice how sometimes when people look at you, they may look away and don't look you in the eye. What I noticed around this room is, is that everybody look, it, you guys were excited about standing up. I ain't seen nobody going, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to talk. Because, let's say I was in there hiring for summer jobs that paid $20 an hour. Who do you think I'm getting ready to hire first? Don't, I don't even know him. I'm hiring him first because I didn't even say who's first. He jumped right on up and introduced himself then. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Because that lets me know he's confident, he about business, and then he would be a good employee to hire. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? See, life is about learning things. And once you stop learning, then you stop living. One more time. Once you stop learning, then you stop living. Even when you're 80 years old, you're still learning how to do certain things. You're learning how to adjust to your body at 80 years old. But I want to talk to you about how you're practicing the things that you're going to be doing when you get older. You ever heard somebody say something like, look, when I get older, I tell you what, man, I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Do you do any of that right now? No, I'm going to do it when I get older. How many people can dunk right now? Outside of you. <laughs> How many people can dunk right now? Can anybody dunk on a 10-foot goal? Who dunk on a 10-foot goal? Somebody else can. But let me ask you this. If you want to learn how to dunk one day, should you start right now learning how to dunk? Yeah. Or should you start when you get 40 years old? Start right now. So if I'm getting D's and F's right now, and D's and F's and A's and B's is how I'm getting paid, what I'm going to make when I get 40 years old? I'm not going to get paid. Did you get it? Let me jump back again. If I'm practicing not doing my schoolwork right now, not being responsible right now, then just like I'm going to learn how to dunk that basketball when I get older, then what am I going to be doing when I get older? Not being responsible, not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, not liking authority. <laughs> you, you, you follow what I'm saying? Let me back up, because I kind of gave you the big picture. Let me drop back to a small snapshot. I'm real transparent when I do my presentations. I like to share some things I've been through. Normally I would be in a suit, but I'm just coming from my other location, so I had to be in some combat gear because it was a tough day today. So that's something I'll tell you about later on. My purpose is to help young people to be able to see things that I didn't get a chance to see when I was younger. You know how somebody like tell you something and you be like, wah, 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 whatever, whatever. Y'all ever did that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how many of y'all have done that before? All right, I ain't trying to hear that. It'd be some older person, you'd be like, man, he don't know what he's talking about. Man, I, I ain't trying to hear that. Everybody, everybody know that? That's right? Yeah. Well, what I like to do is I like to share real life stuff because I know this is the knowledge that y'all speak right here. This is the stuff y'all speak day to day. When I came in, I heard somebody talking about somebody fell, somebody was hurt, or something like that. You know, y'all know drama. See, that's right. That's what you was talking about, right? You saw I was ear hustling. See, you heard me speak some slang like y'all do because that's what I do. I research how y'all talk and how y'all think because I, I want to service the customers and help y'all out. Is that okay? Yes, how many people are all right with that in this group? Everybody okay with that? So I ain't going to be long, but I will come on strong. I'm going to share a couple things real fast, okay? Now, how many of y'all had one of y'all homeboys that's just your boy, that's your, that's your friend? Y'all been, been down since big crayons. You know what I'm saying? He had the big red, you had the big green. Y'all like, man, pull it up, my boy right there. Hey, work on your A, man. You want to make your A. It's like this. Y'all had some boys. Y'all been cool that long? Oh, you been working with the big crayons? Okay, let me see. Uh, uh, y'all had the same little uh, little uh, little PlayStation game, and y'all played it together. You know about that? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You know about that. We don't use crayons no more. Boy, we got work to do. All right, look, they got Play-Doh, so at least we got some of the old school stuff. Okay, okay. Now, I had a friend like that. He was one of my uh, friends in college, and I mean, he was just, that was my boy. We was in the same fraternity. Uh, we stayed at a house right outside of campus, and we just hung together all the time. You know, y'all ever had somebody like that? That just your boy, you talk to him about whatever. You know what I mean? That type of stuff. How many of y'all have people like that? I did too. He moved away. Huh? He moved away. No, he didn't move away. But he went away. And I'm going to tell you what happened. We used to be, uh, well, my, when I graduated, I used to play college football in Tennessee. Okay? Played college football. I wasn't the greatest student at all. I really struggled academically. In fact, I still struggle to this day where I'm working on trying to get my doctorate in education because it was tough for me. How many of y'all ever had tough times taking tests and stuff like that? Right, see? Yeah, I mean, me too. Me too. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. But it wasn't something I made as an excuse. It was something I eventually figured out, well, I can do it, but I just got to work hard at it. Because I guarantee you, the first time I got on the field and I lined up to hit somebody, and I got in that linebacker position, he came up, boom! That wasn't hard for me. I can keep working doing that all the time. You know what I'm saying? So why come I can't sit down and get on that... Man, I got to study. Man, that word hard to read right there. Well, I'm going to keep practicing on it. I can do the same thing. Boom! I can work on that schoolwork the same way. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, it's about what you want right here and in here. If you say it's going to happen, it's going to happen. How many of y'all don't woke up before? Man, I'm tired, man. Ooh, mama, I got a headache. Mama, ooh, I, I don't want to go to school today. I don't feel good. Then they make you go to school, right? They make you go, right? And then when you get here at the school, you be like, then the nurse like, oh, y'all think you do have a temperature. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, I'm feeling kind of woozy. I'm going to throw up. What happens? Do you think you were really, really sick at the time you woke up and said, I don't feel good? No. Say it again. Mentally, guess what started happening? My mind started telling my body, you sick. So my body started going, we sick. We right. You're right. We don't feel good. 
You know what I'm saying? You, you, you feel what I mean? It's just like this, okay? Man, he don't know. He don't want me on the court. He don't want me. He don't want me. He don't want me. I'm taking him to the hole. And then that day, take him to the hole. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what if you was doing this? He gonna steal the ball from me. Watch. He gonna take it from me. He gonna take my rock. He gonna take, oh, he took my rock. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You be there like that sometimes? Like you sit down in front of a test and you go, and I ain't going to pass this. Oh, pass my paper. Oh, let me put my name on the top. I can get that right. Let me put my name on the top. I ain't going to pass this test. And then you get an F. How many people have done that before? Because you are telling yourself the two most powerful words, I am. I am determines you and what you are. So if you say, I am sick, guess what you're going to be? Sick. Sick. I am broke. <laughs> guess what you're going to be? Broke. broke. You understand what I'm saying? You are rich. You are rich. Guess what you're going to be? Rich. You're going to be a lot richer than you was if you was broke. You'll catch that later. Catch up, Mustard. You'll catch that later on. Do y'all see what I'm saying? How many people is that making sense for? So, I had a friend that we were going through school, doing what we were supposed to be doing, but I, I left because we were in a situation where we were bouncers at a nightclub. Now, I don't know, I, in college, that was a job that we could work outside of playing football, and we was big guys, so we could do that. What's but bouncers? Bouncers are the bouncers. people that put people out, right, security, that put people out when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing inside the place, and then okay? And he was there by himself, and he came. No, I'm not going to give you the end yet, all right? What I am going to tell you is, is I left that situation, and I graduated and stopped playing football, and I came to St. Louis, and I went to Jenny's. Because I didn't graduate from here, but I'm saying I went there to speak to a class just like this. Just like y'all sitting here for my grandmother. And my grandmother sat at the desk and she asked me to speak to her kids about college football, about playing football, okay? So I did that. And they said, Can you come back to our class oh, um, uh, this weekend? We got a Saturday event going on. No, 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 I can't make that because I, I got something I got to do, okay? Y'all follow me? So I left and didn't do this presentation for those kids, and I went back down to where I went to college, outside of Nashville. And I went to the place to hang out with my friends. You everybody understand? I got to hang with these kids. They talking about, I got to go hang with my boys. You understand? Know Remember? Mm -hmm. Well, my friend, my roommate, we, we weren't living together at that time because we was, I was out of school, but he was still working at that place. So I came to that place. And I came in the door. I could see him up there. We was like, hey, hey. Oh, there he is, there he is. So we coming in and we look over and I'm getting this close. I'm probably about 10 feet away. And it's a lot of people in the crowd and some guy bumps me as he go in the door. I was like, man, what's going on with you? You know, he move on through and everybody like, come on, man, let's go in the door. Because see, I'm out of the environment so I don't really get upset about stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I was no angel, but I'm saying I used to, I used to get down like that a little bit. You know what I mean? Amen. But I started realizing that, man, there's some other things to do in life. So what I did is we got in there and we walked up and I see him and I'm like, you know, when you see your boy, you're like, what's, it's him. What, what's going on, right? And then all of a sudden, pow, 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 shots ringing out, left and right. And people falling, people running, screaming. So we all, you know, what, what, what you do when somebody starts shooting? What everybody do? You do what? Man, look. What y'all be doing? It? And then what y'all be doing now? I mean, we didn't really know what was going on. Does everybody understand? The one thing that I do remember is, is how everybody cleared out of there and everything was just chaotic, right? So then we get a phone call and they're like, we need you to come down to Vanderbilt Hospital. And I'm like, well, you know, what, what we need to come down there for? No, we need you to come down there because uh, we got to talk to you about some stuff and some stuff happened to your friend. So I said, you know what? Okay, okay, I'll come down there. So we go down to Vanderbilt Hospital and we walk in the door and I see just, just hundreds of people outside. So you know that ain't right. You know what I mean? It's hundreds of people outside, something going on, right? So I'm like, what's going on, what's going on? So when I walk in, the doctor, why he asked me, I don't even know. The doctor looks at me and he says, you can come here. So I, okay. He said, come in here for a minute, step in. He said, I don't know a lot of these people. I mean, I don't know you, but you seem like when people, when you came in, people were kind of drawn to you. See, I had something, something that was outside of me showing that I was the person that should be involved or, or helping. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all ever been like that where it's like, if some other people's doing something wrong, they looked at you like, well, you the one that know better. Yeah. You, 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 you ever felt like that? And see, when that stuff happens, you go, man, I don't want to be the one. Because you know how y'all are. Man, I don't want to be the one that's the snitch. 
I don't want to be the one that's soft. I don't want to be the one that's that. But you know what? You know, he started thinking for a minute, like, wait a minute. Why would he call me over there? Because you know something ain't good, right? If he calling me over there, right? Because I don't need to see no doctor. So what's going on, right? I walk over there and he said, come here. So we step inside the room. When we step inside the room, he has a curtain right here. He pulls the curtain back. And then there's my roommate, my roommate, my friend, laying right there. Dead. He raised it back. He said, I just want to let you know before the parents get here, because we've already called the parents. And they live 30 minutes away, and they're on their way. And they don't even know. But I need you to be strong for the family. And then he covers them back up. Now, remember, I'm supposed to be speaking to some kids in St. Louis at Jennings Elementary School. You understand what I'm saying? And then now I'm in that situation. Follow me. So at that point, I step back outside. His mom and dad come in. He say, stand right here for the mom. That wailing, that wailing sound, that yell that his mom made changed my life forever right there. Because to, for me, I knew we shouldn't have been in that situation. Do everybody understand what I'm saying? And I knew we worked that job and that wasn't a good job for us. And we had some times where stuff almost happened. But I had to get to a point where I realized, okay, this is something bad. You ever had something bad that happened? Somebody in the family, y'all lost some people before. Somebody in the family died. And you like, it's got to be a purpose for that. I may not understand it, but I got to use it for something in here to help me. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, you know, I, I ain't losing y'all, Emma, because, I mean, that's real talk these days, because people be dying real early now. Because, see, we was in college. We thought we was invincible. You know, we really did. We thought we was invincible. We're like, man, about to happen to none of us. We riding. We do this. We go to this place. We go to that place. I mean, we cutting up. But it was like, man, did this just happen? Now, what are we going to do to grow from this? Because this just happened. It's bad. He had two kids. We went to the funeral. His kids was there scratching on the ground. When they put the coffin down in and put the dirt on, kids scratching at the dirt saying, Mama, why they putting Daddy in the ground? I mean, that's real, real, real stuff going on for us. When they had the funeral and we sat there in the funeral, they had two pastors preaching at the same time they was twins. I mean, I, I, now looking back on it, I was like, damn, we that bad? What's name They had two pastors tag teaming, preaching. They both were standing up just like this. And they were twins, and they were talking back and forth to us. Because, I mean, we was out there bad. They was like, man, we got to reel them back in. And you know what they said when they were tag teaming? They said, what if that was you that died right there? What if that was you? Have you done everything in your life that you're supposed to do? He didn't go right into, are oh, you going to heaven and hell? I'm not getting into all that with y'all. Church, state, all that type stuff. We ain't supposed to talk about school. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I am going to say, he asked, because it was a church, second he asked, would you be going to heaven and hell? He said, what if that was you that's right here right now? Would you have done everything you're supposed to do? Now I know that y'all young, and some people say, oh, this might be too early to talk about this type stuff. But see, here's the thing I want to get across, and I don't want nobody to get, as y'all say, get it twisted, okay? I want you to understand something. We always celebrate birthdays. We always talk about that, right? That's my birthday right there. That's my birthday. Right? And that's the most important day. Okay, I give you that one. But that other most important day, or when you pass and when you die, that's not the most important day right there. Because one thing about it, everybody going to have that happen one day. It's just what it is, what it is. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? When they put on a, a headstone, you know, the, the casket, the tombstone, when they put on that tombstone, they put on there that day you was born, Correct? So they put that right here, right? Then on this end, they put the day you die, right? Those ain't the most important things on that tombstone. Everybody already know your name because it's at the top. Do you know what the most important thing is on that tombstone? Not when you're born, not when you die. It's that dash in the middle. It's that dash in the middle. Because that dash in the middle represents everything you've done from the time you started to the time you end. And that dash in the middle, I don't care how old you are, you got to understand that. Because that's what you're doing right now. you already been born. You can understand what I'm saying, correct? Ain't no toddlers and newborns in here. 
So you can understand what I'm saying, right? So that dash in the middle is what you're living for right now. It's what you're doing. Now that dash in the middle on that little bitty thing with that font on there, that little writing on there, might look small, but in life, it can be real long. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, that dash in the middle could be, man, I, I, I went to school, I was successful, I was the first person, that dad's still going, first person in my family to go to college, I was able to buy my mama a house when she retired. That dash can get long, do you see what I mean? But for some people, that dash is this small, because all they are is negative all the time. Every time somebody see them, man, I ain't trying to hear this stuff, they mad. My dad left me. Man, my mama and them ain't right. Uh, man, we ain't got no money. Every time you see them, their dash is smaller and smaller because all they're doing is taking away from everybody. That energy is negative. Y'all ever know somebody like that? They always into some trouble and don't never want to do right. You can't keep making excuses. You, it's a saying you say you cannot make excuses and money at the 